In today's video, I show you how to install and configure HuntR. What is HuntR? HuntR connects to your existing sonar, radar, LiDAR, radar, and WISPAR containers and automates the discovery and upgrading of your media collection. I've had several requests for a HuntR video, so here you go. And thanks for the suggestion. Let's get HuntR set up. But before we do that, I want to give you a heads up that HuntR is in active development and it's rapidly changing, for the better, of course. So as we work through the setup and the configuration, your screens may look a little different, but for the most part, you should be able to follow along without any issues. With that said, let's get started. All right, for installation, we're gonna jump over to our Unraid server and go to the Apps tab. Then in the search box, I'm gonna type in HuntR, H-U-N-T-A-R-R. -R. We'll search for that. You should find it in the list here. Just go ahead and click install. Then it's gonna ask you what branch you want. We're gonna do the default branch. So click default. It's very minimal on the installation of the container. One thing I'm gonna check is the port number here. So I'm gonna expand show Docker allocations, double click on the port number, 9705, hit Control F on the keyboard. It shows two results, they're both right there. It's not in use, we're good to go. If yours is in use, just increment that port number up by one until you find one that's clear. I'm gonna hide Docker allocations now, cause we're good. I'm gonna hit apply and let it install. When that's done, just go ahead and hit done. Now we'll jump over to our Docker tab. We'll look for HuntR on the list here, should be the top item. I'm gonna turn the auto start on and then go over to the icon for HuntR, drop down and select web UI. Now that HuntR is installed, let's get it set up. First thing you're prompted with here is a username and a password. So go ahead and create a username. I'm gonna do my normal demo, then a password, put in your super secret password, confirm the password and then hit next. Now it's asking you if you wanna set up two factor authentication. It's up to you. If you don't want to do that, you can just go down here and skip 2FA. On my main production machine, I did set this up. Since this is demo and I'm not using it anyhow, I'm not gonna bother with it. But if you do want to, if you're using a like Google Authenticator or something of that nature, you can just scan the QR code here. If you're using Bitwarden or, or Vaultwarden, you can actually put this code into there and have it generate the code for you. Once you've got it set up, you just put in your six digit code, hit verify and continue, and you're on your way. Like I said, I'm gonna skip this, so let's just move on. Nice see setup is complete. If you read here, it does say that you can enable an authentication bypass for local accounts. And I'll show you where that's at later in this video. For now, let's hit go to dashboard. There we go, now we're in Huntar. Let's get it set up the rest of the way. On the left over here, you've got some different menu options, home, history, logs, apps, settings. And like I said, this is an active development. This history option wasn't here yesterday, so this is a new feature. But for now, let's just jump right into getting it set up. Let's go down to apps, click onto that item. And you'll see across the top here, that's different too, that changed. Yesterday, this had sonar, radar, radar, lidar, they were all out across the top here. It looks like now they're all in the drop down menus. So let's set up sonar first here. Name, I'm just gonna name the sonar. If you have multiple instances, then you can create it. And you know, you can give it a name for whatever suits your needs, like sonar 4K. If you're doing a separate sonar, that's in you know 4K version only. I'm just gonna name it sonar. The URL, I'm gonna go back to my demo server here and open up sonar. If I can find it, there it is. I'll log in real quick. I'm gonna grab the URL up here with the port number, copy that. Go back to Huntar, gonna paste that in under the URL field. And note that it doesn't like the slash here, so make sure to get rid of that before you continue. API key, let's go back to Sonar. If you don't know where that's at, it's under settings, down to general, and then under security option here, the API key is down here at the bottom. And if you don't see this, just scroll down a little bit and you'll find it. Right next to it, we can copy it. So I'm just gonna hit the icon to copy. Green check mark means it's done. We'll go back to Huntar and we'll paste that in for the API key. Next option down, we've got whether it's enabled or not. We're gonna leave this enabled because we want it working. Now we're in the top right, which yesterday that was over here, so that's interesting. We're gonna hit test connection. Comes up saying it's successful, so we're good. Go ahead and hit okay. And then save in the top right. Now that that instance is saved, if you have more than one instance, you can just click add sonar instance. And as you see here, this is now two of nine. So you can have up to nine instances. I don't need a second one, so I'm just gonna hit remove to get rid of this. Now let's go down to search settings. Missing search mode, right now it's on episodes, and it says season packs are recommended for torrent users. I mostly use torrents, so I'm gonna drop down and select season packs. Missing items to search, right now it's set at one, the default, I'm gonna leave it there. Upgrade items to search, right now it's on zero, which is zero is to disable. If you want it to search for upgrades for your media, then just go ahead and change this zero to a one, or whatever you need for your case. I'm gonna leave it off. Sleep duration is 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. So it's gonna run through the search every 15 minutes. Then you can adjust this number up or down. 
Like I said, I'm gonna leave it on defaults. Scrolling down, additional options. The monitored only, you're gonna have it only search for monitored items. So if it's marked as unmonitored in Sonar, it'll just ignore it. Skip future episodes is just that. If any of the episodes that you have queued up that are not released yet, that are coming out in the future, it'll just ignore them until they've been released. And then skip series refresh, it skips refreshing series metadata before searching. We'll leave it all in defaults. Go back up to the top if you made any changes and hit save. Now that you've got sonar set up, let's go up to the top. We'll click on the drop down at sonar and we'll select radar. You'll set it up the same way. Put in the name, copy the URL for radar, paste that in, get rid of that slash in the back. We'll grab the API key. Once again, settings, general, security, API key, copy. Go back and paste that in. We want it enabled. We'll test it. It's successful. Hit OK. Scrolling down, number of movies to search, upgrades, sleep duration. Everything is the same. I'm not going to change any of it. Just going to go ahead and hit save. And if you have another instance, you just go ahead and add another instance. Go through the same process. Once again, we'll go back to the top, drop down radar, select LiDAR, fill out that information. This one has the missing search mode. You can select artist or album. That's the only difference there. Radar, fill in your instance information. Everything else is good. We'll do Wispar next. Once again, put in your connection to your server there. Default settings, pretty much everything's the same. Then the last item here is Swap R. This is a beta feature only for torrent users. This addresses issues of stalled downloads. So if you're using torrents and you have issues with stalled downloads, downloads that are just sitting there not fully completing. Let's say it's, you know, the file is like 68% and it's just sitting there for days. This will handle that for you. So you enable Swapper, number of strikes. This is how many times that it goes through and realizes that it's stalled. It'll ignore it the first three times. And then after that, it'll take action. Max download time. This is how long it's stalled for. So if it's like continuously downloading and changing, it's not going to consider it stalled. If it's been sitting there in this case for two hours and nothing's changed, it's not downloading at all. It's just kind of stuck. The first time it scans it, it's going to count it as a strike. Second time through, two strikes. You get the idea. Next down, we have ignore above size. Right now it's set for 25 gigabytes. So if the file you're downloading is 25 gigs or larger, it's going to ignore that. And you can adjust this to whatever size you want. A terabyte, that's it's a pretty big download. Next option down is remove from client. This will automatically pull it out of your download client if it's got the three strikes against it. Dry run mode. If you turn this on, it's not actually going to do anything. It's just going to put it in the logs so that it would be deleting it at this point in time. So if you want to try that out, go ahead and Turn that on. Just make sure when you're happy with your results that you come back and turn that off. Once you've got everything set up the way you want, go ahead and hit save. That's pretty much all of the setup for Huntar. Let's go over here on the left and I'll talk about these menu options a little bit. So on the home, since I've got radar and sonar connected, you'll see here the results for it. So it has one search triggered here and one for radar. Upgrades, since I have that disabled, there's no upgrades being triggered. Oh, something else I wanted to note up here is the documentation for Huntar. So if you're not sure about something, you can go look at the documentation and see if you can figure it out there. If you can't figure it out, you can always come join us in Discord. We'll do our best to help you out. I'll leave a link down in the description for you. Next option is history. And like I said, this is brand new. This shows the Plan 9 from outer space. If you haven't seen that, it's it's a terrible movie. Terrible. I mean, this, yeah. But that's the whole idea of it. It's so bad that it's really enjoyable. Like it's a spaceship and they've got like a hubcap that you can see that it's being dangled and it's got like a little bit of gasoline in it and it's on fire it just it's really corny but anyhow back to the history here it shows the search date and time what it's looking for the operation it's missing or it's an upgrade id number for it name of the instance this one's from radar this is from sonar and how long ago it ran logs each individual application has its own log right now we're looking at the swap r1 that's the last one we were in we can select this option here. We can choose to look at all of them all in one. Or if you want to look at each individual one, like here, sonar, radar. LiDAR's got some errors because we didn't configure that. Speaking of that, let me show you that real quick. If we go back to apps, go down to LiDAR. If you turn off the enable option and then save it, it'll get rid of those errors out of the logs. So I'm going to do that for radar as well. Turn off enable, save, and whisper as well. Now we'll go back to the logs. And it'll take a while for that to push out, but it will be out of there. Next down, we have apps. Like you know, this is where all the apps get set up at. Next down, we have settings. You can have it check for updates. Debug mode, you can turn that on if you need it. Log refresh interval is every 30 seconds currently. I'll leave it alone. The state here, it keeps track of the last time it looked for a search, and it's 
tries not to like hammer your search feature. So it'll rest 168 hours, which is seven days. That's not between each search. It's between each search for the missing item. So if you have, let's say, 200 different episodes missing, it's not going to search all 200 at once. It's doing one at a time. That's what we set up in the in the apps. And then it's not going to come back and check that one for 168 hours. It'll check other ones. It's basically how that works. You can adjust that up and down. If you want to reset it and go back to zero, you can just hit reset here and it wipes that out. If you hit reset up here and it says reset clears all processed media IDs to allow reprocessing. So if you want it to look again for something, you can just go up here, hit reset, and it cleans it all out, allows it to be reprocessed sooner than seven days. Scrolling down a little bit, I told you there's an option to bypass the local authentication. This is where it's at. It's under security. Put a check mark in there, hit save. It'll bypass it if you're connecting from a local network. Then advanced settings, API timeout, wait delays, all that stuff. It's just, I leave it all on default. And then don't forget to save your changes. Now if we go back to home, let's see if it's ran any more searches. Yep, Sonar has 37 searches triggered and Radar only has one. We'll look at the history and it shows you what it's looking for. So season two, it's missing 36 episodes, which I know I don't have any of them. It's pretty much it. Huntar is pretty easy to set up, but it's pretty robust. It definitely scours all your media and it looks for any kind of option to fill in your missing holes in your media. But before we go, I wanted to let you know that I've set up a new Amazon storefront where I've created a couple of lists of my favorite items. And I'll be updating it as time goes on. So check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, consider becoming a Patreon. Patreon members get direct access to me on Discord, early access to my videos, and they are both ad and sponsor free. The link's down in the description. Until then, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one. Skip future episodes is epa 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 epa